Hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück auf der schönen Seite der Dunkelheit. Willkommen zurück zu Vampire. Ja, wo wir in der letzten Folge mit dieser Lady gesprochen haben. Und die Medizin für Dorothy Rain besorgt haben, die wir jetzt suchen müssen. Ich kann mir die aber sprechen, ja? Good evening, Sir. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German Shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. Hmm. <lacht> ich glaube nicht, dass er gerne hier ist und ich glaube bei den Zuständen gefällt sie mir auch nicht unbedingt. Wie gefällt es Ihnen bei uns? How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars. If you get my drift. Also ja, seelische Schmerzen. Wer behandelt sie? Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. <lacht> Kann ich etwas für Sie tun? Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Ja, wie gesagt, das wird wohl eher psychisch sein. Dann müsstest du eine andere Behandlung bekommen. Persönliche Fragen. Haben Sie lange gedient? Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. Du denkst, sie waren so ein Fuzzi, der nur da stand und seine Leute in den Krieg geschickt haben, hm? Uh, über Miss Horcroft's Krankheit. How close are you to Miss Horcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. Alarm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. Okay. Naja, auch Menschen mit Dachschaden können naja, gefährlich werden. Lassen Sie sich von ihr beißen. So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of my blood. And the pain. It's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. Hmm. Irgendwie schon. Sagen wir jetzt nicht. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Man kann hier noch taktloser werden, als zu sagen, hey, sie ist psychisch gestört. Wer bist du? Good evening, Mr. Hampton. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, sir, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. Sie waren in William Bishops Versteck. 
How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place and he refused to let me go. Hmm. Why did he kill you? Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. Hmm. Sie sind ein Held, oder? Nein. You dared to enter this awful place alone. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. Dann bist du wohl ein Held. Was können Sie mir über Tom Watts erzählen? Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. Korruption, ja, Verzweiflung kann ich mir zusammenreimen, wegen der Krankheit und allem. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. Okay, Verzweiflung. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. <clears throat> no drugs, no advice, nothing. It's a damn shame. Hmm. Yeah, wie ist die Lage an den East End Docks? What is the general situation in the East End Docks? The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers Trade Union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Das fehlt gar noch, dass sie hier auch noch die Gangs gegenseitig bekriegen. Wer führt die Gang jetzt an? Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion Booth Digby. Hat die Gang sie bedroht? Has the gang been threatening you? Ah no, I've had this nickname for so long, you know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint. Not even criminals. That is good. Uh, wie fühlen Sie sich? Das ist das Wichtigste. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest, and then I can go back to the people who need me. Was machen Sie beruflich? Ähm, ich schätze mal, er ist irgendwie, naja, Pfarrer oder so. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks. And I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Sind ein Priester? Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith, willing to preach the good word. Okay. Um, konnten Sie das Kreuz gegen William Bishop einsetzen? Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. Doch, es wird durch den Glauben genährt. Und so theoretisch, wenn du an das Kreuz glaubst, also wirklich glaubst, müsste es dich schützen. Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really. But I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke? Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. Then, what do I try still? Ah, she's there. Da hinten haben wir aber noch eine Unbekannte. Unbekannte Lady. Du. Good evening, Nurse. Good evening, Doctor. 
I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, Doctor. So. Wie kommt das Personal zurecht? How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially concerning doctors. Aha, sie ist die Frau, also die Freunde von Milton. Sogar hat etwas gegen Ärzte. Why does Milton dislike doctors? Well, I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned, Milton is not the chatty type. Warum hat Milton so schlechte Laune? Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Okay. Uh, wie ist die Lage hier? How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are running out of everything. Die spanische Grippe wird nicht ewig andauern. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end nobody was spared? Ich will sie nicht am Pflaumen. Wie lange sind Sie bereits Krankenschwester? How long have you been a nurse? Or long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. Er fällt ihre Einstellungen nicht. Ja, ob ich was daran ändern kann? Wahrscheinlich kann auch ich nichts an der Epidemie ändern, aber... Sie haben doch so eine Scheißeinstellung. I don't like your attitude, Nurse Hawkins. Pessimism can be as lethal as the epidemic in times like these. Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter. But I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. Is there a Beziehung to Milton Hooks? Pepper, I know you're very close to Milton mm. Hooks. Yes, Milton Hooks is my man. If you want to report me for that, just feel free, Doctor. I have no intention of reporting you, Nurse Hawkins. But are you aware of the risks? The rules say I won't be allowed to work as a nurse anymore. But here at the Pembroke, we break rules all the time. Is he worth the risk? Hey, I'm no perfect woman, and Milton is not the finest bloke. But we do our best to get by. That's all any of us can hope for nowadays. Was ist, wenn die Zeiten vorbei sind, dass sie euch dann gegenseitig einfach fallen? Hm. Okay, da kann ich noch keine persönliche Frage stellen. Dann bringe ich jetzt endlich mal die Arzt neu. So, Schwester Crane. I cannot enter. Ich dachte, da wäre sie. Im Patientenzimmer. Noch so viele unbekannte Menschen. Dann gehen wir erstmal hier entlang. Hey. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Wer sagt, dass ich ein überbewerteter Pfuscher bin? Du kennst meine Arbeit noch gar nicht. Äh, wo haben sie ein Problem mit mir? If you have a problem with me, Dr. Aykroyd, please feel free to tell me. 
Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Nur weil du Zeitungsartikel über mich gelesen hast, heißt das noch nicht, dass du mich kennst. Kein Grund für derartige Anfeindungen. There is no need for such animosity between us. Don't you think the epidemic is already enough to deal with? That is one point we could agree on. And that is precisely why I want to be sure that you will be of help to this hospital instead of a burden. Erzähl mir was über das Pembroke Hospital. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation, they're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Uh -huh. Was also gegen Fortschritt. Nun gut. Haben Sie schlechte Erinnerungen an Ihre Zeit beim Militär? It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. Ja. Ich habe mir mein mir als erstes meine Sporen verdient. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money, fame, or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Ackroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. <laughs> Aha. Was genau meinst du, werde ich im Pembroke Hospital bekommen an Geld? Wahrscheinlich keins. This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. Uh -huh. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Okay. Tell me from you. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed. So I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter. And a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Was können Sie mir über das Krankenhaus sagen? Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? 
I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Warum denn? Was hätte ich davon ab, den Arm zu reparieren? Ärzte erörtern ihren Fall. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Ackroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Ja, da könntest du recht haben. Okay, über dich können wir auch noch mehr herausfinden. Wow, wie viele unbekannte Leute sind hier denn noch? Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Klar, das ist der Gegenspieler von dem, mit dem wir eben gesprochen haben, mit dem Arzt. Eckward, oder wie er hieß. Ähm. Eckward, genau. Erzähl mir von sich. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. Ähm. Erzählen Sie mir von Ihren Experimenten. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. Ja, dabei soll man nicht auf die Menschenrechte verzichten. Warum sind Sie Arzt geworden? What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Ich helfe Ihnen gerne. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. Um, Ackroyd's aversion gegen moderne Methoden. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Okay. Da können sich zwei Menschen nicht ausstehen. Wie war das Pembroke Hospital? What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Sie wirken ziemlich optimistisch. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research. 
yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh, no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Okay, neue Quest erhalten. Wenn man über die Bluttransfusionsmethode möchte ich mit dir sprechen. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him or to prove your point? A fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Erzählen Sie mir Mr. Fiddick's Geschichte. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father, ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. Okay. Wir müssen trotzdem objektiv bleiben als Arzt. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior. A man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones and flesh. Da stimme ich dir zu und ich bin ein bisschen überrascht, dass der andere Kerl nicht mit denen geredet hat. Der beharrt es so auf. Menschenrechte, Menschenwürde. Redet aber nicht mit dem Patienten. Okay. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Gut, ich würde aber trotzdem sagen, wir gehen erstmal jetzt die Medizin abgeben. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, Nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Krankheiten. Krankheiten verringern die Blutqualität eines Bürgers. Verwende die richtigen Medikamente, um ihn zu heilen. Damit er besseres Futter darstellt. Aha. Das ist nicht unbedingt uneigennützig. Sprich mit dem Patienten im Zimmer hinter Dorothy, um seinen Gesundheitszustand zu kontrollieren. Okay. My sweet girl. This hospital seems to be falling apart. But in the circumstances, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. Ich kann doch jetzt nicht mehr sprechen. Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Krankheiten drücke RB, um den Gesundheitszustand des Bürgers zu kontrollieren. Die Heilung eines Bürgers verbessert seine Blutqualität und belohnt dich mit EP. Außerdem verbessert sich der Gesundheitszustand des Bezirks. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. Okay. Wir haben ihn gegen Erschöpfung behandelt. Das wissen wir doch jetzt, dass die Kehle wehtut. Hm. Vielleicht bekommt man noch mehr Informationen. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful, I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. 
Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. Okay. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. Vielleicht kann mir ja so eine Frau weiterhelfen. Good evening, madam. Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, okay, sir. Son. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. Hab ich schon, er redet nicht mit mir. Erzählen mir über Erzählen Sie mir von sich. What can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Äh. Uh, much verbringen Sie Ihre Zeit. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes, thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. What do you think of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. But we had no other choice, considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious attitude. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. Sie hat sich bestechen lassen? Aha. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. Okay, da kann ich ihre Benommenheit durchaus verstehen. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. Ja, bei uns eigentlich auch nicht. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. Hm. Mit dem Sohn kann ich noch nicht wirklich viel mehr machen. Okay, ich würde sagen, bevor wir zu Dr. Swan zu gehen, beende ich hier mal die Folge. Ich hoffe, sie hat euch gefallen und ich schalte beim nächsten Mal wieder ein. Bis dann. Tschüss.